everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger. Welcome to this week's Kafir Middle East Update. It's the week of May 29th. So let's jump right in to uh, talk about what in the heck's going on in the Middle East, Israel specifically. Uh, first, <clears throat> let me wish you a, uh, a Chag Samech. Um, it's Shavuot. It's Pentecost. It is the Feast of First Fruits, and we celebrate the fact that God has given us his word. And may we be diligent. So on our first slide, and by the way, to get the slides, uh, PDF PowerPoint, holygroundexplorations.com. You want to make sure you access the slides that accompany the YouTube. But again, it's our invitation. We call it Kafir, which is Hebrew for young lions. And we do a weekly Middle East update, which you're watching right now. We do daily Bible readings. We do a weekly 30-minute Bible study through the Torah. We're in numbers right now. It's all free. You can sign up on our website at holygroundexplorations.com. Well, let's take a look at our news bites this week. Uh, Anti-Semitism Watch at Oxford University studies have indicated that 20% of Britons believe that Jews are behind the COVID pandemic. Uh, again, we keep our eyes on anti-Semitism as it continues to grow in our day, but it, it's, it never ends. Uh, let's talk about Iran. Iran's president has ordered the government to implement a ban on all Israeli-made tech. Um, we're going to we have an article on this later in the PowerPoint that you'll take a look at. Uh, a lot of news in Israel right now, of course, two things. Next week, we're going to do more of an extensive discussion on the annexation of Judea and Samaria. So that's filling the news, as well as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's um, trial that's going on as well. Now, if you remember last week, we reported that the Palestinians uh, had decided that if Israel goes ahead with annexation, they are going to uh, stop any kind of security coordination. We're getting mixed reviews. Some are saying they're going to do it under the table, but the bottom line is that um, the Palestinian Authority will not exist without the support of Israel, security-wise. Um, Netanyahu has made it clear that if uh, they go through with the annexation, that Palestinians living in the area slated for annexation would be granted uh, Israeli citizenship. So that's kind of our news bites. Our articles this week... Um, the Palestinian Authority in Israel, as we mentioned before, um, without the support of Israel, um, the Palestinian Authority will be overrun by Hamas and other uh, more radical factions. And so uh, I don't put much stock in this rhetoric that's going on back and forth. Um, the Palestinians themselves, their quote is that officials say that uh, they're not prepared to completely smash the security coordination. Uh, they will not allow any kind of outbreak of violent incidents and so on and so forth. So again, I think it's more of a saber rattling situation. Um, but with that in mind, it, it, you know, we've talked about anti-Semitism. There's an article here that's called Peace with Israel. Um, recently, uh, eating with an Israeli or even watching a television series that sheds a positive light on the Jews has come to constitute um, the despised normalization and is now considered a crime and an act of treason. Uh, the Palestinian smear campaign is taking place at this particular time. Uh, but as this sort of progresses, I mean, you can't have a meal. You can't watch any sort of television program that puts Israel in a good light. Uh, how in the world do we see any sort of 
peace agreement if this is the backdrop. Um, BB's on trial, as we've said. Uh, he's vowed, by the way, uh, on Sunday, he vowed that he would not agree to any kind of plea bargain whatsoever. He faces charges of bribery, fraud, and breach of trust. Uh, of course, from BB's standpoint, uh, he is pitting the left saying you're trying to bring the right down. This is all a uh, bunch of hogwash. Hogwash? Israeli? Oh, well, anyhow, that's the quote. And uh, Bibi goes on to say that the last election was really an expression of no confidence to those that set him up for this trial. Uh, again, remember, Likud got more votes in this last election than the one previous, or the two that were previous. A new normal, uh, one of our favorite places to hang out and eat in Israel in the Shuk is a place called Crave. You can see the pictures here, but Israelis are breathing a little easier um, as the new COVID-19 uh, infections remain at a very low uh, level and everything is slowly reopening. Public schools, uh, malls, beaches, bars, restaurants, are all now opened. It's been a tough haul, 25% uh, unemployment, but that's starting to pick up as businesses reopen. Uh, the, Israeli, the Israelis took tough steps through all of this. They closed the education systems, uh, houses of worship, public venues, transportation, places of entertainment. Now, with air travel still at a trickle, Israelis, uh, their famous tourism industry has been paralyzed and hundreds of thousands of travelers, uh, people that work in this industry are eagerly looking forward to the reopening of the skies as we are. Uh, we've heard that um, sometime mid-summer, international travel will be obviously picking up and we do have a couple tours that uh, are going on in uh, the fall. And we've been given assurances that unless there's another major outbreak, these are all a go. They're available for you. Check it out, holygroundexplorations.com. But October 25th through November 3rd, and then also November 13th through the 22nd. And so uh, we'd love to have you come and join us in Israel. There's just no place like it on the planet. Um, as I mentioned, Iran is banning Israeli products. Uh, it, it, Iran's president, uh, Rouhani, has ordered that his government implement a new legislation to ban the use of any Israeli products in the Islamic Republic. Now, what does that actually mean? Um, with Israeli know-how showing up all over aspects of hardware and software, it's not clear how the Iranians are going to be, be able to pull this off. Think about it. Top computer companies like Microsoft, Google, IBM, Intel, uh, you name it, they're all heavily invested in the Jewish state. They have extensive research, research and development operations employing tens of thousands of people, um, Israeli know-how and technologies incorporated in many of their products that are used around the world, including currently in Iran. So I'm not certain that they're going to be able to actually pull this off. Uh, you're going to see it better in the slides itself. Uh, what the hoopla was last week. In a tragic sense, uh, Iran came out with a, a poster size that you'll see in the PDF that says Palestine will be free. That's on Al Quds Day. But they used this title. They said the final solution, resistance until referendum. Final solution, what's that re remind you of? Of course, Germany, the final solution, the extinction of the Jewish race, the gas chambers, the crematoriums. And so again, 
we should not be cut called caught off guard excuse me but this is really the rhetoric that's going on out there there will be no peace now as i mentioned before in the very beginning um at shavuot these next two days my prayers for all of you at kavir is that you would be grateful for the word of god that you would implement a program of personal study and devotion to reading and studying his word also Shavuot, we call it Pentecost as well. Not only is it the birth of Israel, it's the birth of the church. And may the Holy Spirit fill your life like never before. So Chag Samech and Shalom to you all. God bless you. And that's our weekly Middle East update. See ya.